So this is a guide for people who want to get into vintage cast iron. And you may walk into an antique store and see a situation like this with lots of pans. So how do you get into it and how do you just take care of it? And this video should take care of most of the things. So why should you be interested in cast iron? Well, cast iron is really old and um, it's been used for a really long time. It's simply iron mixed with other metals and then melted to make pots and pans. One thing you should know about irons is when it's exposed to the elements, it can rust. So the rust ends up looking like this and destroying pans. So the way people get around um, that is to season it. So some people season it with different types of chemicals, but most people season their cast iron pots and pans with oil. And when you season it enough over years and years, it becomes more slick. And this is a really natural nonstick. So it's pretty healthy and pretty amazing when you get um, when you just use it for such a long time. So I choose vintage because if you look at this vintage Wagner pan, and this is the handle, you're going to see that it starts off really slick. So when it starts off this move for me, it's easier to get that really glass, that really glass finish that a lot of people are looking for. This is a modern lodge. You think the modern lodge starts off a lot bumpier. It over time, when you apply the oil and you apply a lot of seasoning, it's going to get as um, as nonstick as this vintage ones. But the vintage ones just give you give a little bit of a head start for you. So what about buying? I personally don't buy any pans over fifty dollars. Um, that's just me. The best place for me to buy pans is antique stores, and then followed by swap meets and thrift stores. And I try to buy domestic or Euro European Union made um, pans. So when you walk into a thrift store, you're going to see pans like this, and most of the pans here are priced pretty reasonably, from thirty to fifty dollars. The first thing I look at in the pan is I look for any cracks, and I look for really bad rusting. On this one, it's pretty good, so not a lot of cracks. If there's you have any even hint of a crack or you think it's going to happen, I would put it back because that's the deal breaker usually for cast iron. Some older ones may have this ring on the bottom. So just be aware, careful of that. So this one is kind of an in-betweener, but you're going to see that um, I think it's a Griswold and it's really smooth, but the deal breaker is it has a lot of rust. And so some people are going to buy these pans and um, you may be able to fix the rust, but I prefer beginner. I probably would avoid it. So a lot of times when you get this first pan home, you're going to want to strip it, which just means take off the original seasoning. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And W and GS fans are Wagner and Griswold Society, and those are the ones they recommend. It's up to you because it's your pan. Any way you can use is um, good. There's plus and minuses. You can find them all over the internet. Once it's stripped, you're going to season it. And the W and GS method is pretty common across most uh, brands. You're just going to heat the pan. And when you heat the pan, the pan expands. And then you're going to add your oil when it's um, hot. And then this is going to be this is going to let the pan soak in those oils and then you're going to let it cool which is going to lock the oils in and this is the whole process of seasoning so doing this over and over it makes it have that um, really great nonstick surface how do i season well this pan is already seasoned but this is how i just season after every use i add a little bit of bacon grease and then i use a basic um, paper tissue and then i'm just going to spread the grease um, spread the grease of the oil in a really um, thin layer on the top and bottom of the pan. So this is what I'm doing the top part of it. And you want to do the bottom too. Sometimes if people don't do the bottom, it gets rusty. And you can see when I flip it over, mine's a little rusty too. So um, just covering those up with oil. And that's a basic process. So after every time you cook, you're going to want to season like that. What oils do you use? A lot of debate on this, but um, Cheryl Cantor, she did a lot of studies and she thought flaxseed oil is the best, but um, WNGS recommends Crisco. The only thing to avoid is extra version because it's not Hot, it doesn't have a high enough smoke point and it'll just kind of evaporate on contact. How do you clean up? Basically, I just add a little bit of salt to a hot pan. And then my trick is to use coffee filters. Coffee filters don't break down and they can handle higher heat. Add a little bit of oil and then I just scrub away parts that are dirty. If it's a bad mess, I add water and let it simmer for a little bit and then use a wooden spoon so it doesn't affect the coating too much and then just scrub. Usually this takes care of 99% of all my um, problems. So the only cardinal sin is to never use soap, and soap just simply removes that seasoning. So um, if unless your pan is very well seasoned, I would avoid soap at all costs. So what about what pans should I buy? If you're thinking about what pans I bought, um, I kind of collected them for a while, but I ended up with a pretty good lineup. My 80s Wagner is my workhorse. Um, I cook eggs in this, like seared steaks and stuff like that. I use it a lot of time just because of the size. Eight inches is pretty perfect for one or two people. When you need more, I have a 10 inch Griswold, and this is probably my best pan, so it's pretty light um, and it's really slick. It just came really slick. A Dutch oven is gonna be used. Um, it's also cast iron, it's enameled, which is an, another um, method to protect it, but Dutch ovens can be used for a lot of soups, a lot of stews, um, just um, slow cooking. 
And the one I didn't think I'd like is a Lodge uh, round griddle. I use this just to heat up stuff. I do pizzas on it and I um, heat up tortillas and stuff on it. Really, really useful and a good find if you can get it. Some people are worried about fakes. I personally am not worried. I'm not that worried because I don't buy any pans that expensive. But if you are, just go to a reputable dealer or go online and do your research. Um, that's probably the only way to avoid that. So cast iron, um, there's a, it's not too hard to get into. It's really easy and it's really affordable. But at the end of the day, um, it's your pan and how you use it is how, up to you. So that's probably the most important part. Just go out there and have fun with it. And thanks for watching.